Is it worth spending about £500 on a Sobo GX? What do you get out of it? Can you do without it? And are there real benefits to spending that much money uh, to just buy the Sobo GX? And obviously there's uh, some sort of insulation cost on top of that. So let's run through it and see what it does for you. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Offgrid and in this episode I'm just going to look at the uh, the benefits and some of the features and functions of the Serbo GX family and uh, see whether it's worth uh, you considering that, uh, whether you can completely uh, avoid uh, chilling out the 500 plus installation cost for a Serbo solution. So let's get to it. In a nutshell, this is our server GX at our workshop. This is the off-grid workshop. And uh, I'm going to take you through uh, what is what it's telling me on the screen and then I'll take you to a little, few little odds and ends of where we've set it up. So the screen is about 200-ish pounds. This is the, the uh, GX Touch 50, the smaller of the two screens. You get a G GX Touch 70, which is uh, quite a bit bigger than this, but it shows pretty much the same information. So let's take you through, uh, starting on the top left. So because we are connected to a MultiPlus, this top left uh, red box is displayed and uh, the data is populated, if you like. And this is telling us that we are drawing 450 something watts uh, which is 2.4 amps from our grid. 50.1 hertz is what's coming off the grid. And it's in this particular case, it is telling us that we have uh, limited uh, this to 10 amps. We're running this through a standard 13 amp plug, so we're limiting it to, to 10 amps that it can draw through that system. So straight away, quite a bit of handy information on what's happening with the grid. This is the information coming from the uh, MultiPlus. It's telling us a little bit of info, but uh, the most important thing for us at the moment is that the MultiPlus is on, it is uh, busy charging, it is in a, a bulk state, I can tell that from there, uh, and it, the inverter isn't on currently. So it just tells you the state of the uh, MultiPlus at this point in time. On the top right, we have the AC loads. So uh, we are using 428 watts. This is actually, at the moment, is powering all the lights that we're using to do this film. But uh, yeah, so it's uh, 426 watts. Uh, we're at uh, 247 volts and 2.1 amps, 50.1 hertz. You notice that the hertz uh, match exactly with the grid, what actually happens in this with the multiplus is that it, it synchronizes its, its wave with there, so it's actually working all nicely together and it's telling all that information. Coming down to the bottom right, we've got the state of the solar panels. So as you can see, we're only it's a it's a pretty bad day out there. We've got a thousand watts on the roof. We only uh, getting uh, 244 from the uh, the sun at the moment. So because we are using 400 and something and only uh, getting 200 and something, uh, the rest is supplemented from the, the grid itself. If we come to the bottom left now, this is the state of our battery. So the batteries are at 22%, so quite low. And actually what we've uh, told the system now is when they get to around about 20% to charge from the grid because there's not enough sun coming through. And that's exactly what they're doing at the moment. So charging by about 240 watts from the grid. Uh, it tells us the voltage of the battery and how many amps are coming in or going out. So we've got 18 amps coming in at this particular point in time. Right at the bottom here, we can see that the temperature is, uh, what's it, 3.5 degrees centigrade. That's actually quite low here. So you know, it tells us the temperature. And uh, so a lot of useful info uh, coming from the screen. Now the the standard installation doesn't give you as much info as this does. Uh, we've uh, installed something called GUI mods, which uh, to, to my mind makes this a lot more useful. And yes, it is giving us a lot of info on one screen, one fairly small screen, a um, five inch screen, and it's got a huge amount of information displayed on there, but that's fine. Uh, I actually want to see all this info, and I do come and check it fairly regularly. In your particular case, if you if you happen to have the uh, kit that we're talking about, so we've got a MultiPlus, and that's being uh, represented pretty much here, and over here the load's coming out. We've got solar, which is represented here, and we have a smart shunt 
uh, on the battery, which is represented here. And uh, the, the, these, these are the DC uh, drawers coming through. So if you're in a van or whatever, your lights and heating system, what have you. So this is coming straight off the battery, not through the MultiPlus. It is shown over here. So pretty useful information for um, anybody that, that has this much uh, Victron equipment. And we've got quite a lot of Victron equipment on this board. So we'll pan out and show you just what the board actually looks like in our workshop so that you get an idea. So this is the, the board. This is our display board, which we use in the workshop. It, it's, it's actually running off uh, four batteries in parallel. Um, it is a 12 volt system because we want it to be mobile to take to shows, etc. But uh, on this, uh, basically working with the Serbo GX, we have a smart shunt, uh, which is connected to the Serbo itself over here. Uh, we have the MultiPlus, which is connected over here, and we have an MPPT, so the solar controller, which is also connected to here. So by connecting these three items, the MultiPlus, the solar controller, and the smart shunt to our Serbo GX, this gives us this much information, which I'm sure you'd agree is a huge amount of information. So what if you didn't have the MultiPlus? So what if you just had a solar controller and a smart shunt, which is quite common. So most vans have the uh, solar controller, the MPPT and the uh, smart shunt. And if that's all that you had in your motorhome or cottage or whatever, basically, all of this top lot of info would disappear because this is all reliant on the uh, MultiPlus. So you'd still get all of this information at the bottom here. So you'd know exactly what your solar is doing and you'd know exactly what the state of your battery was and whether it was being charged or not and how much you're actually drawing in or out of the battery. So again, uh, useful information, but you would have to decide if 500 plus the cost of the installation is actually worthwhile uh, paying that sort of money just to get the state of the battery and how much uh, your solar is putting in. Especially if you are able to connect to both of these with your mobile phone uh, or your tablet, which you are with Victron Connect. So you can connect directly to the shunt with uh, Bluetooth and uh, get the readings off that and you can also connect to your solar controller and get the readings off that. So you would have to decide if that 500 pounds is worth it. But there are some other things that you could take into consideration. I'm going to show you on uh, my phone here, my Serbo GX in my own motorhome. So in my motorhome, we have some other equipment that we've been testing and taking through its paces. We're going to be changing over to full Victron system shortly, but in the meantime, in my particular motorhome, uh, I have a smart shunt and a Serbo GX, and you'd wonder why on earth I would install a Serbo GX when all I have at this point in time is the smart shunt. So let's take you through the app and see what I get. So this is the uh, remote console of my screen, and I'm going to talk shortly about VRM, which is a, a good reason to consider a Serbo GX. But let's run through this. So. On mine, I don't even have a MultiPlus, so I don't have the grid shown here, and I don't have the uh, outgoing power shown there. So I do have the state of the battery, so mine is currently 100% because it's on electric hookup, uh, so no surprises there. Um, but I have uh, three bits of information here which I find quite useful, in particular these two bits of information are very useful to me. So I have a proper... Um, a gauge on my fresh water tank and that is telling me that I've got 64% of uh, water so I've got 103 litres of water on board. Uh, very accurate, accurate to 1% of what's in the tank and that is uh, really handy for me to see. I, the Most motorhomes have those uh, units that tell you whether it's uh, a quarter, half, three quarters or full and the problem there is that the uh, so let's say that it's showing that it's uh, half. That could be nearly three quarters or nearly uh, down to one quarter, which is a huge difference. That's 50% uh, 
pretty much of the, the tank in a variation. So which one is it? This one tells me the exact amount, and I can see that from the comfort of my armchair through VRM. The second one, which is really handy for me as well, is the exact amount of uh, LPG that I have. So my LPG tank currently is sitting at 47%. So I've got 19 liters of gas, uh, 47%. So that, that I can use that again, planning a trip, I don't need to go out to the vehicle to go and have a look and see uh, what is currently sitting in my tanks. So, uh, a very elementary installation. Let's talk about the temperature uh, a little bit because this is actually quite important. And it's it's more than just to know what the temperature of the motorhome is. Um, <clears throat> because we use the vehicle throughout the year and even in the cold months, we don't actually winterize it. So for us, it is uh, quite critical that things don't freeze in there. And what I have here is a generic uh, temperature sensor uh, that tells me the temperature in the vehicle. And if it was to approach, I think I've set it to five degrees centigrade, if it was to go to five degrees, it would send out an alert to me that I have a, uh, a danger of things freezing in the motorhome. And again, that you can check to see what the temperature is from anywhere in the world where you have an internet connection and uh, is, is quite useful to know uh, when damage could could be incurred. Uh, so for, for somebody that is uh, putting their vehicle in storage or, or uh, where things can freeze and damage uh, could be caused, uh, this uh, is quite quite handy to have. So finally, um, with the Serbo GX, uh, you, you would usually connect it to the internet. So most of us have a MiFi or a mobile hotspot or whatever you want to call it in the vehicle. I, I have it so that when I arrive home, it connects to my mesh system at home automatically. And so my server GX is connected to the internet at all times. And the advantage of that is firstly, you can get to see what is happening from anywhere. You don't have to be at the vehicle. So you could be in town having breakfast somewhere and say, oh, I wonder what the LPG is. Do I need to fill up before we head off on our holiday or whatever? And you can quickly jump onto your phone and see what, what it is. VRM is quite handy. It's, it's Victron Remote Monitoring and uh, it's a free service op offered by Victron if you have a Serbo GX. And there's quite a lot that you can do with uh, VRM. So it's not just about the monitoring itself. It's also about setting up alerts and things like that. So you can set up various alerts that uh, will tell you when uh, your van is getting too hot. Let's say you have pets, for example. We all leave our pets in the van. We, we need to go and do shopping or something. You're not allowed to take the dogs into the supermarket. So you leave them with hopefully enough ventilation. You've got uh, your dog sitting there. You have a temperature probe and the temperature rises to a certain level that uh, is going to be uncomfortable for the dogs. Well, it can tell you that uh, it's getting too warm for the dogs. So handy stuff like that. The fact that uh, the Sobo GX connects to the internet is a huge plus. And w once you start using that facility, you sort of wonder how you manage to exist without it. So we use that quite a lot, especially for the dogs. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. Hopefully that will help you decide if you need a Sobo GX. And uh, as I said, it's quite a bit of money at 500 pounds. Uh, is it worth it for you? I think if you're going to connect all these uh, different tanks, etc., it becomes really worth it. Uh, if you have pets in the uh, vehicle, I think it's definitely worth it if you're in the supermarket or something like that. But uh, you decide. See you in the next episode.